What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about The Real Housewives of New York City, Season 14, Episode 14, Connecticuting the Dots. So you're gonna like, comment, subscribe, and let's jump right on into it. So I started off with a little montage and the only noteworthy scene involved Brynn seeing her psychic. And her psychic was like, oh, I see that you're between like these two opposing forces right now. Presumably Jessel and Aaron slash Cy. And Brynn's like, oh yeah, like, do you think they'll be able to squash it before Saturday? Because that's when my birthday party is. I'm inviting both of them. And the psychic's like, you're the one in control of the balancing of it. So basically saying that th how the situation goes is in her hands. And bitch, if that's not some fucking foreshadowing, I don't know what is because yeah, Brynn just like, I don't want to say she, like, ruined her own birthday party because I think she did exactly what she wanted to do. She wanted to be fucking messy and drunk and just, like, do her thing. So I think Brynn had the exact party that she wanted to have. Like, she caused all this fucking chaos and right afterwards she was, like, just chilling, having a fucking ball, like, catching candy in her fucking mouth and shit. Just, like, all that shit. So, yeah, Brynn very much was just the messy bitch of this episode, which was like, okay, she's getting shit moving, very much on her housewife shit, but um, there's some other moments with Brynn that just still didn't really do it for me, and I was trying to point those out as well, but anyways, then we move on. Then we see Aaron and Uba, they're off doing bumper carts, and afterwards, they reminisce about their night at Swingers, and Aaron says she feels kind of bad about how they treated Pavit, or like, how he, like, got a lot of shit, basically. Um, but she still thinks his answer about, like, why he settled down with Jessel was still kind of weird. But the thing is, Pavit's answer was very similar to Abe's own answer. Like, yes, some of the language was different, but as far as the sentiment goes, it was very fucking similar. Like, she's kind of glossing over that. But anyways, um, Uba disagrees, though. She's like, in my own weird way, I feel like Pavit's answer was the best. Like, I want someone who's gonna deal with my shit, to be honest, see what I mean? So she kind of gives her own perspective, and Uba mentions how Sai's husband, David, he kind of got on her nerves a little bit by, like, asking why she's, like, still single, blah, blah, blah. Like, not only getting on her nerves, but, like, it kind of bothered her a little bit. Um, in a confessional, she says that Sai is the only one who knows that she's actually dating someone. Or, I don't know if they're, like, dating, dating, but, like, she has a boo, you know what I mean? Uh, but it seems like they're dating from what, from how they talk about it. Um, we then see Brynn and Cy coming up in Central Park, and this prompts Cy to reminisce about her mother, because her mom loved Central Park, I guess. She said she was, like, raised, like, in Central Park damn near, you know what I mean? Just, like, go every fucking day. It was, like, the fucking spot. And when Cy was, like, a child, she would um, sell incense with her mom at Central Park, like, her mom would wrap incense up in this, like, tin foil, and she'd, like, send Sai off to go, like, try selling it, but Sai would just, like, hang out under a fucking tree and tell her mom, oop, got no sales, you know what I mean? So, kind of reminisces about that. Britt explains how she intends to, um, get a tree in Central Park endowed in her grandmother's name, and she wants to be by a pond, because she loves ducks. All this shit as they're walking and making their way towards the um, conservancy people. It was so funny because I kept like, I was like, the, the conservator shit people, I'm so fucking like Britney Spears, all that fucking shit. But it's like, okay, no, it's the conservancy, not conservatorship, but the conservancy. Um, and side notes that like she and Brynn, they're like having a little relatable moment because like, you know, they're both kind of connecting on this level. And it's like, wow, Sai, so you can connect with Brynn, but you weren't able to offer that same like, had that same experience with Jessel. But on the other hand, it's like, well, maybe Sai just doesn't fucking like Jessel. You know what I mean? Like, like who said it? Like, um, like how Aaron said earlier this season. Maybe they just like her more. You know what I mean? Like, maybe Sai just likes Brynn more than Jessel. So that's why Sai was able to, you know, connect with Brynn on that level. So they do that, and they find, like, the perfect tree all quick. It has this, like, really cute, like old bench under it and it's this whole little thing and notably there were also ducks by the tree when they like saw it like Sai spotted some ducks and bring it to really emotional and it's a really cute little moment we then check in with Jessel who's having a photo shoot for a new e-commerce brand it's focused on highlighting accessories and fashions out of India and the Middle East 
That's so sweet. Jenna's letting her use her apartment. Jenna's like, no, I'm always down to help another woman. Jess will ask and I'm, I'm totally game. Over the years, she's done like 50 some odd photo shoots in her apartment. She's like, it's totally fine. She's helping her out. She's like hooking up with some lashes and whatnot. It's really sweet. And she's also offering some like free creative direction game. You know what I mean? So really awesome. Uba also links up and it's so funny. So Uba calls, she's like, oh, I'm outside. I'm like um, coming to the building. And Jess was like, okay, so Jenna's elevator is currently broken. So you have to walk up like a million <laughs> flights of stairs. <laughs> And Uba does it. She's wearing heels and shit. She's all tired and she gets up there. She's like, the shit I'm gonna do for my fucking friends. And she's offering um, some modeling expertise. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I think she should show her like her midriff a little bit more. And you know, just kind of like offering her input and whatnot. Afterwards, Jessel fills Uba in on what Bryn told her about Sai and Aaron and what they're saying about Pavit. Jenna's already brought up to speed on that. So Jessel's just telling Uba and Uba and Pavit, it's so funny, they, they both reference like the same statistic. Because remember, one of the points that Aaron made was like, oh, Pavit wasn't wearing his wedding ring because he lost his wedding ring like the second they got married, essentially. And both Uba and Pavit, coincidentally, they were like, oh, like statistically, men who wear wedding rings get hit on more often than men who don't wear wedding rings. And it's just like, oh, just like, it was such a coincidence. And Jessel's was like, oh my gosh, did you guys like talk to each other? Like, what the fuck? So just a little funny little moment. I thought it was cute. But yeah, as they're chatting, Jessel just says how fucking pissed she is. She's just like, you know, I'm over this. You're not gonna fucking talk shit about my husband. It's one thing if you're gonna come after me and be mean to me, but leave my husband out of it. So she's really pissed off and she's ready. She's just like, I'm not sure if I'm just gonna pay them dust, if I'm gonna like have to check them, or I'm not sure, but Jess was upset. Uh, we then see Sai and Aaron, they go shopping for some Venetian masks. Aaron says she wants to drop kick Jessel after she learns that Jessel called her a parrot. She's like, a parrot? I wanna drop kick her. And I'm like, oh wow, Aaron who was saying that Uba was scaring her and that she felt intimidated and whatnot. Like, really bitch, you're gonna, make these threats of violence. Aaron's just like, typical. Like it's just a stereotypical, you know, whatever. Um, after trash talking Jessel, Aaron brings up Uba's gripe with David and his comment about why she's still single basically. And Sai just kind of taking it back and she explains like, well, I'm sure you meant it in like a positive way. Like you're such a catch, you're so amazing. Like kind of defending David a little bit. And then Sai's like, Uba's fine. Like she's fine, like she's dating someone. And Aaron's like, what? Like, oh my gosh. So, and Sai didn't say too much, but she does acknowledge that like, wow, I kind of fucked up. Like, I shouldn't be saying anything. I sh yeah, I, but, so she says that she fucked up, shouldn't be saying anything. And that she instantly regretted saying it. But we eventually learned that after this interaction, she said more while they're at the club with Bryn. So it's like, I think she regretted saying that little bit on camera because like, Sai really didn't divulge that much information, but she did it on camera, which violated Uba's trust. But anyways, we didn't see everyone getting ready for Bryn's little birthday party. Jessel and Pavit, they're talking shit about Sai and Aaron as they're getting ready. Jessel's like, they're so obsessed with me. It's like Eminem stan level fucking obsession and whatnot. And yeah, we didn't see everyone pouring into the party. Jenna arrives with a female friend and this prompts Bryn to like, discuss the um, specific invitation stipulations. And she's like, it clearly says, you may bring the person who you last made love with or who you hope to make love to after the evening or some shit. Like, basically who you're fucking. Like, you can bring whoever you're having sex with. And Jenna brings this woman, so Bryn's like, ooh, okay, Jenna, like, what's up? And after making this observation, Bryn, of course, demands a kiss from Jenna for her birthday. And Jenna obliges, and it's like, Jenna, like, I get it, it's like, oh, do it out, but it's like, girl, the fucking self-respect, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I remember being in high school, and it's like, these dudes would be like, oh, like, I want these girls to start kiss, like, they'd have, like, girls would kiss, like, just for men's entertainment, and it's like, girl, like, get up, you know what I mean? It's like, you're not even about that shit, that's pretty much what it's giving, you know what I mean? It's like, Jenna, what are you doing? Bryn, she's a fucking creep, like, I'm sorry, like, I think Bryn... So, be like later on, 
She gets all the men together. She's like, oh, it's a Bryn hand job. Because they're all like touching the same knife that they're like stabbing into the cake or whatnot. It's a Bryn hand job. Bryn, like, it's creepy. She's a where my hug at ass bitch. Like, it's creepy. And I think she needs to scale the fuck back. And I think it's comical that like, she's gonna come on all strong with all this shit. Reference poking holes in condoms. I'm just gonna call Pavit out for saying that Sai's bipolar. And yeah, that's like, that's not cool, but damn it, Sai and Aaron are giving Jessel hell. Pavit's saying something about it, and again, I don't think Bryn is the one to call him out when she says her own problematic shit. You get what I'm saying? But we don't consider it problematic because it's coming from Bryn, a pretty woman. You know what I mean? So it's like, whatever, girl. On the side, we see David apologize to Uba. It's nice to see, kind of nips that in the bud. Jessel then arrives and she does the bare minimum while greeting Sai and Aaron. And Sai's like, great, Jessel's ignoring me, it's all I want. But Aaron's a little bit bothered about this. She never seems to confront Jessel about it like two minutes later. She's like, you didn't say hi to me. And Jessel's like, I did. And we see the footage of her greeting Aaron, but it's like, well, not really. You didn't give me a hug or anything. And it's like, where, why do you care all of a sudden? So there's that. And during this little interaction with Aaron, Jessel mentions that, oh, well, I've heard that you've been trash talking my husband. And, you know, Sai, she rolls up, joins a conversation. And after Jessel, like, essentially pays Sai desk, basically, she and Aaron, they go off to have a little bit of a deeper conversation. Aaron says that Jessel's like lumping Aaron and Sai together, but Jessel's like, it's warranted. Like anytime I have an issue with one of you, the other one's like right there, just ready to fucking jump in and whatnot. And that is very much true. Brendan interjects and says that Jessel isn't mad enough and she has to defend her integrity by like standing up for herself. And it's like, Brynn, did you stand up for yourself when you had issues with Aaron earlier this season? Like. I mean, I don't think she like backed down per se, but I don't think Jess was backing down either. Like, I think they may have different confrontation styles, but I don't know. And I get what Bryn's saying, but it's also like, girl, shut up. You know what I mean? And at one point Bryn's like, you don't fucking stand up for shit. Stick up for yourself, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh my gosh, like chill, scale it back, girl. Um, at that point, Bryn, obviously fucking drunk and bored. She initiates a game where everyone airs a grievance they have with someone else with the intention of like moving on and dropping it there. And everyone's like, oh wow, such a fun fucking party game. <laughs> like girl, what the fuck is this? And kicking it off, Bryn, she said that she was a little thrown off by Pavit saying that Psy is bipolar. And Bryn says that, yeah, Pavit took it back after I like made him basically. Though he followed this up by saying that Sai was being a bitch. And in the confessional, Pavi stands ten toes down and he's like, did I call Sai a bitch? Probably. And if I said it, then she was probably being a bitch. Like, and people are like, okay, as far as the messy house husband shit goes, there's always going to be a messy house husband. People are like, if I had to choose which of the New York City husbands would take on this role... I'm gonna go with Pavit. Cause again, he's like already, he's like essentially was pulled into the drama. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't even like involved or like cared about, he didn't even give a shit about it. But it's like, well, they, they kind of demanded that he be in it. So I don't know, I thought that was kind of funny. Um, Sai then says that, you know, she's not a bitch. She's only straightforward with Jessel because she's a liar. And she mentioned all this Vietnam stuff about how like, well, she said that you were gonna go like in a week and that's why you guys are planning your staycation and we see the footage and that's not what Jessel said. She said, oh, he's gonna be going in the next few weeks and there's all this confusion. It's like, Sai, yes, Pavit has the ticket for the flight for Vietnam, but he is unable to go because the flights aren't opened up. And apparently the flights keep getting pushed back. So he's like, I don't know when I'm going, but I know I'm gonna go soon, essentially. And all this shit, and it's like, Sai, you're like, no, you're wrong. Like, every time Sai thinks that Jessel set up the Vietnam trip is proven to be like uh, a miscommunication, like a game of telephone, essentially. And yeah, ultimately, Jessel's like, who cares about the Vietnam trip? Who cares? And this prompts Sai to start yelling. She has her big old fucking neck vein out. She's like, I don't care, blah, blah, blah. And, Jessel, she shuts her down real quick. She's, she calmly asks her to like 
stop yelling at me. She didn't ask her. She tells her calmly, stop yelling at me. Don't yell at me. Don't raise your voice at me. Sai eventually fucking stops barking at her. And she starts, you know, recounting all these butchered ass recollections about what Jessel told her. All this shit about what went down. The conversation then ends and the group breaks off at that point. Afterwards, Jessel chats with David for a little bit and Sai, of course, rolls up. She's like, what are you guys talking about? What are you guys talking about? As if it, it was just the, the, the vibe it was just so weird. It's like as if she thought that like Jessel was like hitting on her like, what are you guys talking about? It was like, girl, like, let her just, let her talk to your husband. Like, it's like, just chill, girl. It's not a big fucking deal. We didn't see Erin roll up with her little parrot mask and a little colorful feather boa. And she inside her little parrot routine. It's like, oh, I'm a parrot. Like, Erin just mimicking everything that Sai says with, like, a higher pitch and whatnot. All that shit. Then I was like, then all these funny, lighthearted vibes ensue. And it's going really well. Brynn's birthday cake comes out. It's styled to look like three books stacked on top of each other. And it's like a Nancy Drew book. And it's really cute, actually. Um, she demands to take a picture with all the guys for a little home moment. They're all holding the knife as they put it into the cake. And she's like, oh, hand job. It's a Brynn hand job. It's a Brynn hand job. And it's like, Brynn, shut up. Like, I don't know. This is why, like... Brynn's not gonna settle down, I'm sorry. Until she's like in her 50s, like, I don't know. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's like, Brynn, like, you have to just, like, you, you, you do too much. It's too much. The women then chow down on some cake, and Uba takes a call while she's eating. And Brynn kind of overhears slash peeps this, and she exclaims, Uba, I hear you've got a man in Connecticut. Sai tells Brynn that was fucked up, which Brynn denies. She's like, that wasn't fucked up at all, what do you mean? Erin provides added context of confessional, though. And she's like, okay. So, Sai mentioned that Uba was dating someone on camera when it was just me and her at the mask shop. Later on that same day after that, she, Sai, and Bryn, they all went out for Bryn's birthday. And while they were there, they made a little pact. And she says while they were there, they made a pact. And Sai provided a lot more detail, like... Saying more about Uba's man, what he did for a living, like, who he was, all this shit. Basically giving them all the details. And Sai starts hemming and hawing about how this is inappropriate and this is Uba's business. And Bryn says this later on, but it's like, well, why are you saying that now? Like, like, oh, this is Uba's private business. Well, why did you say anything in the first place, girl? Like, it starts with you. But anyways, Uba, she makes a little comment to Bryn on the side. She whispers to her, if you say anything about Connecticut, I will circumcise you. And if you know anything about female circumcision, girl, this is a threat. I'm like, oh, my, my Uba. Like, that was almost like, because Uba's cousin is Chanel Ayan from Rosswares of Dubai. And she opened up about her experience with female circumcision. And, you know, it was a really big emotional thing. And so it's like, Uba. Like, I don't know if that was a, an appropriate comment, but... Anyways, Uba then acknowledges that, yes, Sai is the one who shared the information and told Brynn. But Brynn's the one fucking saying it right now. So Brynn is the one who's fucking up in this moment in time. Uh, Brynn says that Sai started it by mentioning it on camera. Uba, she waltzes over to Sai and she tells her what Brynn mentioned. And Sai explains the matter. She's like, I told Aaron that you were dating someone on camera, but I never went into any detail. And Sai is telling the truth. Sai isn't butchering this story. Sai may butcher every fucking story and every memory she has with Jessel, but not this interaction. I also have to note that Sai is acknowledging that she did fuck up. She's like, look, I told Aaron on camera that was a little accident. It was a fuck up. I instantly regretted it. And then Sai's like, and as for me telling Bryn and going to more detail, I spilled the bean. She's like, I was drinking, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, Sai, like, whatever. You want to bitch and moan and cry about how Jess was not opening up to you. Then you have Uba opening up to you and you're violating her trust. This is why bitches don't trust you. And yeah, Sai again starts lecturing Brynn about how this is Uba's personal business and whatnot. And Brynn says that Sai opened up the door by discussing it on camera which Sai vocally denies. She's like, it was not on fucking camera. It's this big old moment. Her neck veins going crazy. 
Brynn does not flinch for a second. She's just in that shit, I guess. Um, Sai and Uba are just really pissed at Brynn. They head out. Brynn, she's like, I didn't break the circle of trust. I just drunkenly mentioned a U.S. state. It's like, Brynn, like, stop acting like the fucking... It, like, Brynn's trying to throw rocks and hide her hands. She's like, act smart, but act stupid. It's like, Brynn, what the fuck are you doing? Like... I, I can, like, appreciate what Brynn's doing while still, like, side-eyeing Brynn and being annoyed with her. You get what I'm saying? Um, but, yeah, and outside, Sai talks to Uba. She's like, that was fucked up. That's not okay. Uba, sa Uba is kind of, like, just trying to leave the scene. She doesn't seem like she's that upset with Sai, but she may just be kind of over the situation. I think that they're mainly upset with Brynn at that moment. And, you know, I... You know, I do think that Uba should be kind of more upset with Sai in the moment, but I also get her, like, immediately being upset with Brynn. I think maybe when she gets home and thinks about it, she'll be more upset with Sai. I'm not sure. Um, as the others leave, we learn that Brynn, she's upset with Jessel because, once again, Jessel didn't stick up for herself, and Brynn's getting in trouble for some stupid-ass shit because she mentioned a state. And so you didn't just mention a state, bitch. You mentioned her dating someone, like... Shut up, Brynn. It's, like, so stupid of her. Um, yeah, then the party ends. We get the end cards. Nothing too noteworthy. Just kind of what you expect to see. Like, nothing crazy. Uh, Erin moved out of Tribeca to be closer to her kid's school. So, who knows where she's at now. Um, Jessel and Pav, like, they, they, like, compromise on a $32,000 school for the boys and whatnot. Like, just kind of little updates and whatnot. We learn that Brynn, she says that she's allegedly freezing her eggs in Switzerland so it, they can be stored where the millionaires store their money. And I'm like, I bet she's just trying to be fucking, like, Brynn loves being this fucking, like, mysterious sex in the city, like, gone girl ass bitch. Like, oh my gosh, I was engaged. And then I just looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, I can't be a wife. I, she like, I just can't, I just, I just run away from any type of commitment. I just... No one can pin me down, but I'm a helpless romantic. I just want to be so mysterious and freeze my eggs in this foreign country, just be with these rich men. I'll bet you that Brynn never even fucking froze her eggs. Like, and it sounds fun. Like, I, I'm just saying, I feel like it's for the, the shtick. It's for the fucking, the allure. But anyways, that's it for this episode. Now we just have the reunion, and that'll be it for season 14. So what do you think down below in the comments? Be sure to also like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Bye.